I, on the other hand, saw this video and I had to talk about it. Um, honestly, it had me in tears. I first saw it when I was at the gym, so I had to not um, really show that I was in tears. Um, but then I rewatched it and rewatched the whole thing while I was in um, alone in my um, car, and it's horrific. If you have any type of experience with child abuse, if you were abused as a child, this may be something that triggers you. Um, so that so I would completely understand if you were to clock out for a little bit. Um. Yeah. So I'm not going to play the whole thing. I I went through through it a second time and kind of picked out the parts that were important but a lot of it is important i'm going to be giving you um, my perspective on this situation um because i wasn't i used to be a doc officer and for those of you who don't know who, what that is it is a uh department of corrections officer i was pretty much a prison guard um <clears throat> my training as a prison guard as somebody who is only dealing with prisoners adult prisoners as somebody who is de was dealing with people who were convicted of murder and in some cases child molestation and rape i was given training that contradicts everything that happened in this video it it was training that if something like this were to happen in the prison then then you would be hung up by your toes because it, it, everything just was so wrong from the beginning um so yeah let's go ahead and uh start the video i have some time stamps that i want to utilize so let me pull all that up real quick before um all right to 135 okay your desktop one is on yep come here okay so this beginning he's um you can see the nine-year-old uh right here um he's, he's he's kind of he's kind of going after her um, and right now he hasn't really done anything wrong. If there's a nine year old in a, in a situation, um, you, you kind of have to be with them, I would think, uh, because if you just leave them alone and something happens to them, you become responsible. So come here, I'm not going to walk all the way down the street for you. Come here. Okay. That right there, I'm not going to walk all the way down the street for you. Come here. That was extremely condescending. Um, not particularly a big deal, but you're not building very good rapport with this nine-year-old by being condescending like that. Um, you are a, a, an officer. You are hired from the people to protect and serve. If that means you got to walk all the way down the street to protect and serve a nine-year-old, then that's what you have to do. It's freezing out. Nobody gives a fuck if you're cold. You are the officer. You are the adult in this situation. Like, like the fact that you're cold is 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 minuscule, is microscopic compared to what this girl has already been through, and compared to what you are about to put her through. Okay, so he's running after her. He's got to catch up with her. So I don't really blame him for running right here. But um, watch what he does when he catches up to her. immediately puts his hands on her she stopped he didn't catch up to her because he was faster than her she stopped but he still felt like he needed to immediately put his hands on her no stop <laughs> um i don't know if she was like just being dramatic here but she said ow my arm which means that he could have been holding her too tightly for <laughs> I got her at uh, 76 Harris. Just uh, start a rig. 
Get off of me! Stop. What's going on? Get off of me! What's going on? Get off of me! I'm not gonna get off. So right here, he tries to take the bag from her. There has been no, no attempt to build a rapport with this young girl whatsoever. Um, he immediately puts his hands on her, which even in a prison setting, putting your hands on somebody is, is, is it, it takes a lot to, before you are, it's okay for you to put your hands on a prisoner. Um, and he's trying to grab the bag from her. What kind of, what kind of, um, what kind of, how do you think this girl feels right now? She's not feeling like this guy is here to help her. Um, she probably feels like she needs to be in a defensive mode right now. Uh, w which everything that happens after this can pretty much be blamed on a combination of this initial interaction that this cop had with this child and the incompetence of everyone else involved. Um, when I was training for the DOC, I took a class called um, Crisis Intervention Training, and they taught us that when somebody is in a, a state of crisis, and this young girl is definitely in a state of crisis, it does not take somebody with specialized training to see that, then the first thing that you are supposed to do is introduce yourself and ask for their name. And then you ask them what's going on, and you show reflective listening. Meaning, um, she, you, and later in the video, you're going to hear some things like, I want my dad. And if you were say, trying to show reflective listening in that scenario, you would repeat, okay, so I hear that you want your dad. And take the conversation on from there. What that does is it, 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 it disarms the person that you're talking to. It calms them down a little bit and makes you, them feel like you're there to help them. As opposed to there to take them away or, or to be combative towards them. So, so th this initial interaction that he had with her is completely off. It would be off if you're dealing with prisoners. It's definitely wrong when you're dealing with a nine-year-old. Okay, so that I, I have time stamps that I want to skip through because I don't want to subject you guys to everything. Um, it's just not necessary. But some of the more horrific stuff at the end, I feel that I have to play because I have a lot to say about that. All right, right here. Who did? <laughs> she did? Okay. My blood you've seen off of my lip. The fuck? So, um, I don't know why the timestamp's right here, but apparently she, she, she told the officer that, um, she stabbed, talking about her mom, she stabbed her, her, her dad. So now you have a potentially fatally wounded man who is missing that it is this girl's father and she wants to see him um so unless they already have a squad out looking for him uh he should have been calling for um for somebody backup right then and there i would think no it was not because when he walked in the house he was holding his stomach it was my blood how the hell so yeah so the mother is claiming that um the dad had been abusing her which tells me that this young girl has been witness to domestic violence. Um, you'll hear a lot of uh, foul language coming from the young girl later on. Uh, that is probably a result, definitely a result from her surroundings. Uh, the people that had raised her, um, the things that she has witnessed, that, 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 that is, that is what, what causes her to act like the way that she is. Um, in general. Uh, and what I mean by that is what, when I was watching this, I got the sense that this girl, her, her, her demeanor is much older than nine years old, which is a tragic situation for anyone to be in. Because if you have to grow up faster than what you are, if you have to be older than what your age is, that means there's something wrong in the household. And it just definitely seems like there's something wrong in this girl's household. And anybody that was, like, trained to spot these things, as police officers should be, um, would, would see that. And, and he, they would come at from this from a place of empathy instead of a place of, 
place of I'm the authority, you're going to listen to me, which you would clearly see that these officers have in later in this video. So your lip gonna bleed all the way down to your stomach to your pants? Who's your dad? Who's your grown ass little girl? Your grown is a bitch. Don't know what you're talking about. Look at you. Who's your dad? That was that was your blood of your lip. So right here, he really should have been trying, and I guess he's the only one at the scene right now. But he should have been trying to get the mom and the um, young girl separated from each other because the arguing is not helping anything. Um, maybe if he had a call for backup in order to um, make that happen, that would have been um, the 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 move. But uh, at letting them two argue like this is just going to escalate the situation. That much blood. Yo, yo, you, you finna really make me do it. Ma'am, ma'am. What are you finna go on, in on your ass? Because she's nine years old and she's really behind. That's why she killed me. So, I, I'm not sure. I think that the lady said, um, wait for me to go in on your ass. That's why she's done. That it's okay. Head, you but... sit there and watch this man put his hands on me all the time. You oh, all even... the time. Did you stab him? No, I didn't. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. How do you know that? Because. Why? How I, do you know that? Yes, because when he time. when he. This cop seems really uninterested in trying to help anybody in this situation. Uh, you could tell by the tone of his voice. It, he just seems. Did you stab him? How do you know that? But like, he, he's showing no concern for anybody in the tone of his voice. And maybe that's just the way he is. If that is, then may, he needs to find a, another career because um, when people are in crisis situations, they have to believe that you want to help them. He walked Listen, in the house. My car, when stop. he walked it's in the house, Come his, he was holding. Okay, so your lip gonna go to his blood. He has me in the head. I'm not. I'm not. So you stabbed him? I'm arguing. I'm sitting there arguing with it. Yeah. So I stabbed him. I stabbed him. Yes, you okay. did. I just come put on. the police on him. They're going to find him. Come no. On. He is. No, no, no. They're going to find Dude, him. Dude, just come with me to my car. You're going to tell us. You're sitting here lying. I'm not. So the mother just physically threatened the child. She said, You're going to get your ass whooped for sitting here lying. Uh, I'm not First of all, Steviana, uh -huh. you gonna bring your ass to this oh, motherfucking house, and I'm gonna ask you one more time. You gonna bring your ass to this house if I yoke your ass up and drag you home? I got custody. You're my child, so you gonna take your ass home right now? The officer should not have let the mother get that close to the child. Um, she is obviously being hostile towards the child. Something that you learn in DOC is that um. When you're assessing whether there is a potential for um, physical violence to occur, you, um, the um, potential assailant has to have three things, and that is um, the, the desire to commit harm, the opportunity to commit harm, and the um, ability to commit harm. The mom has shown desire to commit harm to this child by threatening her earlier. She has the opportunity to commit harm. Look how close she is to her. And she, um, she has the means to commit harm. She's obviously much bigger than the child. So, so, so she can commit harm pretty easily. Um, something that uh, came up when I posted about this on Twitter, I think it was, was that the child had, um, the police was responding to the child who had um, in the pa uh, earlier threatened to kill the mom and threatened to kill herself. Or to harm herself i don't know how true that is but even if that is true when the officer has the child by herself outside in the cold like this the child does not have the opportunity or the means to harm anybody so any type of physical altercation that's um, started by the officer cannot be justified because she threatened to harm people earlier in the day or harmed herself earlier in the day um it wouldn't be justified in the prison if you put your hands on the on an offender and try to justify it um by she was going to harm somebody but she didn't have the means to harm somebody didn't have the opportunity to harm somebody then that would not be justification for you putting your hands on somebody and you gonna take your ass in the house all right um next one's at 5 15. yeah mom's trying to start a fight with cars driving by um, so get a couple cars down so this is the point where he finally calls for backup after he just saw the mom hit the child 
or try to hit the child. I don't know whether she made contact. This is the point that he finally calls for backup. Stop. Stop. He's physically, he's physically restraining the child, keeping her from walking away, which on the one hand, yes, you do need to stick with the child. On the other hand, first of all, had you made proper rapport with her, she probably would have stuck with you in the first place because she would have been able to feel like that she could count on you. But also, like, she just got attacked by her mom, threatened by her mom, potentially witnessed her dad getting stabbed, um, witnessing domestic violence. If walking away from the situation is what she feels like she needs to do, then um, physically restraining her from doing so is probably not the best move. Now, the officer is in a very tough situation at this point. Got the mom that's trying to um, start fights with other people in the car. Got the nine-year-old that's trying to walk away. If he lets the nine-year-old walk away, he will not be there. Should a fight start out between the mom and some stranger? Um, but restraining the child isn't making things any better with the child. I don't really know what I would have done in this situation. I would say ideally, it would have been better if um, he had let the child walk away and just followed her. Um, she probably would not have gone far um, and let back up, take care of the mother. Um, but yeah, that's, that's just a tough call. Uh, you definitely do not want the nine year old to be alone because she could get lost and that would be a bad situation. Uh, I would say that would be a worse situation in an altercation between the mom and a stranger. Put her in your car. No! No! So, yeah, there's backup right there. There is no reason that he couldn't just let her walk to where she wants to go and just kind of follow her. If, if he had a good rapport with her, if he had started a good rapport with her, she would not ha have been opposed to that. And even if she was, he could have followed her, try to find out if there's anybody else. That, that she would be more willing to cooperate with. There, 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 there's options here, and restraining her is, isn't the best one. Okay, um, 935. Yeah, he's she, her, he has a freezing. Get in the car, I'm done telling you, get in the car. So, get in the car, I'm done telling you, get in the car. That is not a thing that you say to a child that had just been traumatized by her parents. And that has just been traumatized by you. Um, I skipped about a little over four minutes of the video uh, just because it, all it is is that his camera drops and you hear the child just screaming at the top of her lungs at these officers to get off of her. She wants her dad and this, that, and the other thing. I did not feel it was necessary for us to play that. That is what happened. She was traumatized by these officers. This, the, all, everything that's happening right now is a traumatic experience and he's just making it worse with his authoritarian attitude. For some of these people, it's not about helping people. For some of these people, it's a power trip. And I would say, just from the little bit that I have seen of this officer, that is all it is. He lost power to control his life at some point in his life, and he chose to be an officer so that he can have power over others. At least that's what it seems like to me. And these types of people, should not be officers. They are not public servants. So she just made the first threat, pepper spraying the child if she doesn't get in the car. Um, this officer, this female officer, made no attempt at building a rapport. She does a little bit more, but but she starts with the physical altercation before she even tries to to attempt to make a rapport with this child.
Alright, just keep them yeah. staged for a minute. Huh? Fresh, are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Just need a neighborhood check. Mom's out here. I catch her. Mom's out here trying to fight people driving by. 129. She's the one that called originally. Okay, what do you want, a depot or what? I'm ready to take mom. I'll take mom's dress and I'll go arrest her. Now, not that arresting the mom would be the wrong move here, but did you realize the way I'm ready to take mom? Like, like what? What? That 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 that's just more evidence to me that he's in this career just because it's a power trip for him. Um, throughout the video, he he he. I'm pretty sure it's the same officer makes threats you're oh you're gonna go to jail now too and i believe he's talking to the nine-year-old when he says that um it, it's he's using jail as a threat and as a way to obtain power over others and that's just not what we want our public servants to be doing yes you're gonna be fine here, just stop for a second. I want my dad. So this child is making a clear desire to see her dad. And instead of like trying to talk to her, instead of being like, okay, listen, we, we, we're going to try and find your dad. We just want you to get to a warm, safe place. And and if you could, you know, something like that. Um, which to be honest we're far past that um right now at this point because of all the the bad actions that the cops made the bad decisions that the cops made before this point the, the, talking to this child isn't going to work anyways but being physically aggressive to her continuing to be physically aggressive to her is definitely not going to work either so yeah, I, at this point, it just it's, it seems like a loss. And everything that they do from this point forward is it, just digging the hole even deeper. Control 47, I'm in the... I want my dad! No! Stop it. Kick us, dude. So yeah, they're handcuffing her for some reason. She hasn't really shown to be a threat to anybody. She doesn't have any weapons, so she's certainly not a threat to these grown ass men. But they still feel the need to handcuff her. I want my dad. Stop here. You good? Me for me sure. I want I know. Bob's still trying to fight you. Ma'am, hey, get out of the street for me. Get, get out of the street. Get out of the street for me. Just stay out of the street. Okay, so I'm going to play this video for the next two or so minutes. Um, great. Uh, everything from here is is really is, is is child abuse. I would I would say that it would be child abuse on the part of these officers. So um, if if you have had a hard time watching it to this point, it's 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 just gonna get worse. I want my dad. Here. It might be the either this. I want my dad. Take a breath. You're all right. Stop. Can I just see my breath? He, he says stop, take a breath, as if you didn't just spend the last five or so, five to ten minutes brutalizing this child. Like, like, why do they think that this child has the ability to stop and just take a breath and calm down after what they just put her through? I want my dad! Wait, can I... And and that's on top of everything that she went through before they even got there. Just please get the snow off of me. I'll get the snow off. It's cold. Get in the car. You had your chance.
That guy is yelling, get in the car, as if that's going to make things better. Get in the car now! Okay? Okay? You've had your chances. He's, he obviously has power trip issues. Um, the other officer says, you had your chances. When really, the reality is, these officers never really gave her a chance in the first place. They never presented themselves as people that were there to help her. When he caught up to her, he immediately put his hands on her, putting her in a defensive state of mind. So the girl had no chances. You gave her no chances. What are you dad. doing? I want what are my you dad. doing? I want my you're going to go to jail now, too. I want my Have dad. Wait. There. I just want to see my dad, please. For the last Get time. I want car. my dad. Get in the car. I demand him. I don't care what you demand. Let's go. I don't care what you demand. It's This guy is so obviously has power trip issues he, he 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 he's in it for the power oh I she's got her leg underneath my car stop i want my dad i want my dad stop or you're stop. getting yourself hurt stop he's hurting me i want to ah. oh my god then get in, get the, in car. the car so he is physically hurting this child and they are putting a condition on them stopping her, her getting in the car for them to stop hurting her. Please help somebody! No! You want me to grab her from the other side? Yeah. I want my dad! Stop! Can you sit her up? Stop! Sit up! No! You're acting like a child. I want to stop! I am a child to fuck! You're acting like a child. That right there. That says something to me. That says that they, they don't even see this person, this child, as a child. They see her as a full-grown adult. Which is insane to me. Like, maybe it's because of the way she's acting. But if this nine-year-old child had to grow up to be older than what she actually is, then that is a test, more of a testament to the trauma that she has experienced in the past than anything else. The fact that these police officers do not see this child as a child is 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 sickening. I have a bad arm, then stand up. Again, it, it's not going to stop hurting until you comply, is what they're basically saying. I want my dad! I can't hurt, she's on the ground. Stand up! Stand up! Stand up! So she's now asking for a girl officer, which to be honest, they probably should have had a girl officer dealing with this in the first place. Now I understand that female officers are probably not as, um, as prevalent in the force as um, male officers, but yeah, they probably should have had a female officer dealing with this in the first place. Um, I think he just threatened to spray her. So they'll get off of you if you get up. If she's asking for this male officer to get off of her, it shouldn't be a conditional statement. She is handcuffed in the in a compromised position in the back of the car. There would be no harm done to anybody if you just immediately get off of her. He shouldn't have been on her in the first place. I got her. I got her. Come on. I will. They will let go, but you gotta stand up. Stand up. Will you stand up for me? Will you stand up? Hey, look at me. Stand up. I can't the way I'm sitting. Ready? Yep. Go down. And I don't know if any of you have ever been in those handcuffs or had those handcuffs behind your back. Um, They're not comfortable 
they are very painful just to have on. Um, they're they're not. Hey, we we had to have them on. Um, when we were DOC officers in training, uh, just so we could see how it feels. So you had the fact that she's in this compromised position, like like that had to have been incredibly painful experience for her to go through. A little bit more. So he's pulling her arm. Her arm is behind her back right now. He's directly behind her. He's pulling her arm. I don't know. Have some. Uh, put your arms behind your back, interlace your fingers, and have somebody pull up on them. That's basically what they're doing to this child. She doesn't have the luxury of being able to bend herself forward in order to relieve the pressure from her shoulders. So, so it's basically like her being in a chicken wing is, is what they are doing to her. Let go if you're going to be, if you're going to stop. pull you, okay? So she just said, um, if you get in the car, he won't pull you. Basically putting a, 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 another conditional statement saying we will stop hurting you if you just comply. So she's finally, oh, I'll find your dad. Um, which, which should have been like a thing that you talked about a long time ago when, 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 when she was standing up next to that pole with her backpack in her hand. Um, um, when, 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 when you were supposed to be building rapport with her instead of, instead of physically trying to manhandle her. Get in the car, I'm done telling you. Get in the car. That That is just ridiculous. That that is that is beyond belief. That an officer would say that to a nine year old child who had just gone through all this. <laughs> there he goes again, pulling on her arm. This officer needs to be charged with child abuse. Because that is basically putting her in a chicken wing situation. She's already said she has a bad arm. Whether that's true or not is irrelevant. Because he shouldn't be doing this to her. Period. Stop Get on. back in the car you then. Gotta sit back. Too hard. You won't do it if you sit back. Come on. Again, putting a conditional, um, putting compliance as a condition for him to stop hurting her. You have to remember too that this child in her mind I don't know whether it was true or not but in her mind she had just saw her dad get stabbed by her mom she wants to see her dad she wants to make sure he's okay like like that's what's on her mind right now and these officers are just adding to the trauma not only that, um, you might have missed it because of where I paused it, but she just said you're going to get pepper spray in the eyes if you don't sit back. It's going in your eyeballs. Come on, let's go. I'm going to go get him. Now sit back. Come on. I will fix it. I will fix it. So the tone of voice that she's taking with her, I'm going to go get your dad. Isn't that the tone of voice that's going to instill calmness in the child? You're, when, when I was in um, CIT training for the DOC, they stressed a lot that you are not to raise your voice to somebody who is in crisis.
because they will match the tone of your voice. If you talk in a calm, collective manner to somebody who is in crisis, then most likely they're going to to bring down their tone and try to try and match yours. I will call him. Sit back. But they are losing their patience. Okay. She just said they are losing their patience as if she isn't the one that just yelled and threatened to pepper spray this child. I love my dad. What's her name? I don't know her name. Grad Street, what's her name? So the officer just asked, what's her name? The female officer that's dealing with her does not know her name. The other officer, uh, I think he called her Bradstreet, doesn't know his, her name. Um, I don't know if Bradstreet was the one that um, that was, had the initial dealings with her. In DOC training, you are taught that one of the first things you do when approaching somebody in crisis is to introduce yourself and get her name, uh, the, the person in crisis's name. The fact that none of these officers do not know this child's name tells me that either A, they are incredibly incompetent and is not listening to their training, or B, they are not getting training and dealing with uh, the same level of training and dealing with people in crises as the Virginia DOC which is a problem because the peop uh, police officers on the street is dealing with the public and are constantly dealing with public citizens who are in crisis situations. When we go into a situation as DOC officers, or I was a DOC officer, we are dealing with offenders who have a much higher potential um, um poten uh, potential for violent behavior than than your general public does and we are still given this type of training and are expected to abide by this type of training if these officers do not approach these situations in the manner that the doc is expected to and there is a problem, a huge problem, in the system somewhere. Dear, wait, okay. you, just stop for a second and take a deep breath. Hey, just stop. Please. I will get your dad. Bro, oh, you said that you were gonna pepper spray me. No, please, no, stop. Did you see hear that? The child just said, "You no, you said you're going to pepper spray me. Please stop." It, this child doesn't trust anyone that's around her right now. They are all victimizing her in her eyes, and she's right. These people aren't trying to help that her. They might think in their head that they're trying to help her, but their actions are just adding to the trauma. And she doesn't trust any of them, because none of them have ever bothered to try and gain her trust. Just spray her. Just spray her. Just spray her. Is what he said. Just spray her. So both the female officer and the male officer just grabbed pepper spray and shook it up, preparing to spray this child. Dear. I got her. I got her. So yeah, um, her her last cries in this video was, "Please wipe my eyes, wipe my eyes, please." They got her in the car, and they're just gonna let her sit there with pepper spray in her eyes. And the DOC, when you pepper spray an offender, which by the way I never had to do, I never pepper sprayed anybody when I in my three years in the DOC. When you pepper spray an offender, that offender and anybody that was in the vicinity that feels like they need it is sent to immediate medical assistance. And they're going to just let this child who just got pepper sprayed sit in the back of the car with pepper spray in her eyes.
To be honest, every single officer that was in this situation is culpable for what happened here. Within policing, it's hard because if you are a lower officer and, you, and the senior officer take, uh, gives you an order and he's doing bad things, it can be hard to disobey that order. But I would argue that it should be your responsibility to disobey that order. It should be your responsibility to stand up to your senior officers or your, um, your, I don't know what the word for not senior, um, your, your officers on the same level, if they are doing such egregious acts against people, especially children. These officers are signed up to protect and serve. And that is what they should be doing. And none of these officers displayed a willingness to do that. They should be protecting and serving. It doesn't matter if it's from other citizens or if it's from fellow officers. None of these officers showed a willingness to do that. And to me, that tells me that none of these officers are qualified to be officers.